John chapter number 10, just going to read one verse. Going to read verse 27. The Bible says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the good singing, good congregational singing, good choir singing, good special singing. Sing and bless my heart, Lord. Matter of fact, Lord, it was so good. I, I'd been satisfied saying, Lord, you, you just blessed and we could have went to the house. Lord, I know that singing is wonderful and it soothes the soul. But Lord, you chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. And Lord, it's preaching that stirs our soul. And so, Father, I pray you'd help us from the Word of God right now. You know every person in here. You know they're down-sitting, they're uprising. You know what they stand in need of even this very hour. So I pray you'd speak to hearts. I pray for any that may be amongst us today who do not know the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Lord, they're strangers to the grace of God. Lord, I'm glad they're here. And Lord, I certainly pray they've been made to feel welcome. And I pray right now, the sweet Holy Spirit of God, we begin to open their eyes to the truths of the things of God. And I pray today would be the day of their salvation. I pray for those in attendance that know you. And Lord, they might not just be living up to their name as a Christian. I pray today would change that. I pray for those that are here today that know you that may be struggling, that God, you'd encourage them. Somebody that might be hurting, that God, you'd just sit down beside them and help them. Lord, somebody that's seeking some answers, I pray that God, you would fulfill their desires by showing them the answers they need. Now, Father, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. I pray that you'd bless, and I pray you'd be highly magnified and glorified. Father, have your will and way. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> John chapter number 10, uh, for my assumption, might be one of the greatest teachings and lessons and chapters of the Lord Jesus in his entire ministry. He settles some things in John chapter 10, and he establishes some things that ought to settle and establish some things in us. And in verse number 27, I want you to notice some things. Notice, first of all, the possessive. He said, my sheep. He didn't say sheep. He said, my sheep. He didn't say those sheep. He didn't say the sheep. He didn't say uh, some sheep. He said, my sheep. He's talking about those that belong to him. Now, I don't know much, but I know the Lord. And I'm glad I'm one of his sheep. I'm glad I belong to him. You know, there's a lot of folks don't like that terminology. You belong to someone? Oh, yeah. He bought my soul. He paid for me. And I'm glad to be one of his today. Uh, I'm one of the Lord's. Uh, I'm not ashamed of that. Uh, I'm glad to stand up and be counted as one of his sheep. We see the possessive. Notice, if you will, the perceptive. He said, my sheep hear my voice. Mm, you say, Brother Doug, I, I know the Lord, but I don't know his voice. Well, you can't know him and not know his voice. Right. He said, my sheep, mm, they hear my voice. You say, how do you know it's his voice? Well, if you know him, you know his voice. huh? Now, I've never heard his audible voice, Brother Phil. I've never heard the Lord audibly speak my name, but he spoke my name. Night I got saved, uh, I was lost uh, on my way to hell, sitting in church like I had uh, uh, every church service for ten years. Uh, but that night... Uh, it wasn't my granddaddy doing the preaching. I heard a voice from another world uh, 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 who inside of my heart uh, started to let me know that uh, I needed the Lord. Uh, and oh, I know his voice. Uh, can I say in the 48 years I've been saved, there's been a lot of times I've heard preaching. And then there's been times I've heard him. 
Can I say there's been times I've heard singing and then there's times I've heard him. There's been times I've been just uh, uh, driving down the road, had my mind on something else, and I heard his voice. Uh, 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 there's just something about his voice. Uh, he speaks with a still, small voice. Uh, he, even though his voice is as many thunderings uh, and his voice is mighty waters, uh, when he speaks to our heart, he speaks in that still, small voice. Uh, he said, uh, my sheep, hear my voice. We see the possessive. We see the perceptive. Those that know him know his voice. Yeah. Notice, if you will, the proportion. He says, and I know them. It's one thing for folks to know about Jesus. It's another thing to know Jesus. But he said, not only do my sheep hear my voice, he said, I know them. That proportion means there's a relationship here. Hmm? Now listen, my wife and I have been married 33 years. Hmm? I'd like to say for her they've all been blissful. But you all know me. Huh? And can I say when we got married, Brother Bob, I thought I knew her. But now I know her. Hmm? I can just look at her and say, what's wrong? She say, nothing. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Uh, you know, back when we got married, Miss Lisa, if she said nothing wrong, I said, well, good. Now, I'll just go on down the road. Uh, but now, I've learned them cold shoulders aren't fun to live with. And I've learned some things about her. Uh, because I know her. Because we have a relationship. I know when she's up and I know when she's down. Not all the time. But I know her. I know when she's hurting her. Hurting. Now, she'll come to church, you don't know when she's hurting, but I know when she's hurting. I know when things are bothering her. I know when things are on her. You know why? Because we have a relationship. And can I say, the Lord and I have a relationship. You see, he, he not only wants to be your redeemer, he wants a relationship with you. Huh? He wants to hear all your troubles. He wants to hear all your, your, your things you're excited about. He wants to have conversations with you. He wants to walk with you and talk with you. And he wants to be more than just your master. He wants to be your friend. Huh? We have a relationship with the Lord. We see the proportion. But then notice the pursuant. Look what it says. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me me can I say this about sheep sheep's the dumbest animal in the barnyard and sheep will follow something and I've learned this about human beings they'll follow anybody if they sound like they know what they're talking about hmm? but Jesus isn't talking about sheep he's talking about his sheep he says his sheep he says they follow me but Bob, if somebody says that they know the Lord, but they don't follow the Lord, they don't know the Lord. Hmm? Uh, uh, somebody says they're saved and they follow Buddha, they don't know the Lord. Hmm? Somebody says they know the Lord and they kiss the Pope's ring, they don't know the Lord. Huh? Somebody says they know the Lord uh, and they're going to a cult, they don't know the Lord. Because hmm? those that know him, they follow him. Hmm? Listen, the greatest day in your life is when you realize you don't have to make the decision anymore. Just follow him. Yeah. He always leads you right. Yeah. So I'm interested in this verse this morning. I'd like to preach on this little thought. I'd like to preach on he knows his sheep. Hey. He knows his sheep. Mm. What a blessing. Yeah. Mm. I hope you know him. But he knows his sheep. You know, uh, there's a wonderful parable the Lord gave on the wheat and the tares. How uh, the enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat. When they sprung up, they looked alike. Yeah. And you don't know the difference between wheat and tare until harvest time. Because at harvest time, the tare doesn't have any seed in it. Right. And can I say, there's a lot of people say they know the Lord. There's a lot of people go to church. Uh, there's a lot of people that sing Amazing Grace. Uh, but you're not going to know if they're saved or not till the Lord comes and opens us up, right. takes us home. Amen. Harvest time settles it all. But make no mistake, he knows his sheep. Right. Yep. Mm. Can I say, first of all, 
he knows their name. Hmm? Uh, now this may shock you, but Joe Biden doesn't know your name. He doesn't even know his own name. Uh, I seen where over the weekend he called Kamala president. She might as well be because he isn't. Uh, he don't know your name. Uh, Andy Bashir don't know your name. I think he found out mine a couple years ago. I wish he hadn't. But uh, hey, listen. He don't know your name. Uh, mm, there's a lot of important people in man's eyes. They don't know your name. But the most important person that's ever walked on the face of the earth, the Lord Jesus, if you're his sheep, he knows your name. He knows your name. Huh? Because you have a relationship with him. Uh, hey, listen, uh, uh, there are folks that I have met and had acquaintances with, uh, but I don't always remember their names. Uh, Miss Nett and I was somewhere the other day, and somebody come up was talking to us. I said, who's that? She told me, I said, oh. See, I don't have a relationship with them. They're just acquaintances. I didn't know their name. Hmm? Could I say? The Lord Jesus knows your name if you belong to him. Listen, he knows everybody's name, but he really knows your name. If you know him. Are you listening? Can I say this? Uh, he knows your name personally. Hmm? Personally. He knows you personally. He knows which Ed we're talking about when we mention Ed. Got three of them right here. Got a triangle of Ed's. Huh? Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Huh? He knows which one we're talking about. Because he knows them personally. Hmm? Listen, uh, it's one thing that he knows everybody. Because he knows. He knows every person that's ever been born. But when you know him, he knows you personally. Hmm? You let that sink in. Huh? The Lord Jesus, if you're born again, knows you personally. Hmm? Knows everything about you. Hmm? Oh, what a Savior. Hmm? He knows you personally. I'm glad I know him personally. Huh? I, I don't have to talk about Jesus. I can talk to Jesus. Huh? Because I know him personally. Hey, if I was to call the White House, if there's such a number you can call, they, would, they wouldn't take my call. But listen, all I got to do is get on my knees, and he's sitting there listening to me. Huh? I don't even have to get on my knees. I can be thinking in my mind about him, and he's listening to me. Uh, uh, listen, he knows me personally. Uh, there's no waiting line to talk to Jesus. Huh? Can I say this? Uh, he not only knows my name personally, but he knows my name personified. You say, what does that mean? That means he knows my past, my present, and my future. Hmm? Now listen, Brother Ray. There's a lot of us, if we knew our past, we wouldn't want to hang around each other. But he knows our past yeah. and still wants to hang around us. Hmm? He knows where you were before you became one of his sheep. He knows how vile and wretched we all were. Mm, but he still wanted to know us personally. Hmm? He knows our past. He knows our present. He knows uh, 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 where you've overcome and where you fell short but he still wants to know you personally. Hmm? That's, that's a gracious Savior. Huh? Hey, I know Baptists, if they think you fell short a little bit this week, they won't even shake your hand. Huh? But Jesus, he'll, he'll not only talk to you, he'll put his arms around you. He'll let you know he cares. Uh, he said, cast all your cares on him, for he cared for you. Even when you fall short, we do every day, he still shows us grace uh, and mercy uh, and love uh, and compassion. Uh, he knew my past. He knows my present. Uh, and because uh, of what I was uh, and because of what I am, uh, that doesn't concern him as much as he knows my future. He knows what I'm going to be. Uh, he knows I'm going to be like him one of these days. Uh, Hey, what a blessing. He's already seen me uh, in eternity for the future. Uh, and what a blessing to know that he cares that much about us. Mm, they used to sing that song, he's still working on me. And that's what he's doing. He's just getting us ready for what we will be. Huh? He knows our name personified. He knows us personally. He knows us personified. And he knows us passionately. He has a deep affection for you. Can I say this? No one ever died for you in your sin. Hmm? Uh, there might have been people that died for our nation. There might have been people that, that took a bullet for somebody else. But Jesus deliberately died for you because he loves you so much he didn't want you to die and go to hell. 
He loves you passionately. Brother Bob, he loves you when you're up and he loves you when you're down. He loves you passionately. Listen, you can't say no one ever, ever cared for you because yes, Jesus cares for you. He cares for you so much. Huh? Listen, uh, a lot of people just want to be loved. I got good news. Jesus loves you. And Jesus loves you just like you are. Hmm? Uh, there's a lot of folks say, well, if I look like a supermodel, somebody would love you. Well, Jesus loves you just like you are. Somebody say, if I was a bodybuilder, man, somebody would love me. Jesus loves you just like you are. He loves you. And when you become one of his sheep, he falls in love with you, my dear friends. Over there in the Song of Solomon, uh, 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 we find where uh, uh, the picture of Christ and his bride, uh, the, the Solomon and the Shunammite maid, uh, 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 he called her, my sister, my love. And when we come into that relationship with Jesus Christ, we are joint heirs to his throne. Uh, we are brothers and sisters in him, uh, but we're also his love. What a blessing. And he has loved us with an everlasting love. Can I say he knows the sheep? He knows their name. Can I say this? He knows their nature. He knows your nature. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can I say that he knows your particulars? He knows all your traits. Yeah. Those are your good traits and your bad traits. Yeah. And I know Brother Tommy don't have any bad traits. <laughs> but he knows all your good traits. Huh? Huh? I figured I'd get an amen out of Christina right there, but I didn't. He must have some bad traits, huh? Huh? Listen, he knows all your traits. He knows the number of the hairs on your head. He knows your thoughts and the intents of your heart. You know, Jeremiah told us the heart is deceitfully wicked. No man knoweth it. You don't even know yourself what you're capable of in a weak moment. But Jesus does. He knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. Can you imagine? You know some of the thoughts that have run through your mind this week? Jesus knew that. Uh, can I say he knows your strengths? He knows what you're able to do and what you're not able to do. Hmm? He knows all about you. He knows every trait you have. He knows those things that you don't think anybody else knows. He knows. He knows your nature. Hmm? Uh, he knows those things you don't like coming out of you. Hmm? He knows your temperament. He knows how much pressure you can take before you come all to pieces. He knows every fiber of everything about your being. He knows every atom that makes up your body, your carbon. He knows everything about you. He knows our nature. He knows our particulars. He knows our puniness. He knows our weakness. Hmm? Uh, I know we think because we're independent Baptists, we all got big yellow S's on our chest. Hmm. My dear friends, we can look at the book of Job and see that a day came and all of his strengths and all those things that most people trust in were taken away. Amen. He knows your weaknesses. He knows those things that will cause you to want to throw in the towel. He knows those loads that are too heavy for you to carry. And he said, take my yoke upon me. Hmm? Why? He said, you yoke up with me. He said, I'll carry you and your weaknesses. Hmm? I'll carry your load too. Hmm? Listen, he knows our puniness. He knows what you're able to bear. He knows those things that uh, just cause us to become weak. Hmm? He knows those temptations that we can't handle. He knows our particulars. He knows our puniness. He knows our panic. He knows our fears. Those things that will cause you to panic. You say, I'm not afraid of anything. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Hmm? There are things people fear. Hmm? That and Tammy are in Florida. When they get back, I'm going to church them. He sent me a picture. I opened it up. It's a stinking snake. He said, Brother Doug, I can't believe you're afraid of snakes. I'm not afraid of snakes. I'm a Bible believer. Genesis 3.15, God told the serpent he'd put enmity between his seed and the woman's seed. 
There's a lot of enmity between me and snakes. I hate them. Hmm? Hmm? So I said, you're not right, Thad. He said, you know that. You've known me for a long time. Told him he was sick in the head. Huh? He said, I thought you'd love that. I said, I love that as much as I love Chinese food. Huh? There's something that all of us have that we fear. Even Job said in Job chapter 3, the day of my greatest fear came upon me. Right? Hmm? Jesus knows what makes us panic. Our fears. He knows us. Knows our name. Knows our nature. He knows our pain. Amen. Some of the greatest actors in the world do not reside in Hollywood. They reside in Baptist churches. We like to walk around like nothing bothers us. And we have no pain. Friend, if you live any length of time, you're going to have pain. Man's days are few and full of trouble. Amen. You can have physical pain. Then you can have an internal pain. Maybe it's a pain of a loss of a loved one. Maybe it's the pain of uh, failing and not living up to your potential. Maybe it's the pain of shortcomings in your life. Maybe it's the pain of regrets. Things that you wish you would have done differently. Whatever pain it is, he knows that pain. Hmm? I've got good news. He's got a balm of Gilead for our pain. Can I say he doesn't eradicate the pain or eradicate the pain. He gives us grace to live through or overcome the pain. You know what? Uh, a scar doesn't remove the pain that caused it. It just shows that it's been healed. Amen. And can I say the Lord doesn't do away with scars. He just shows us how good he's been to us to help us overcome it. Yeah. Hmm? Amen. You know why we have pain? Let me talk to these young fellows. You guys don't know anything yet. Lucas don't even know to put socks on. What's wrong with you, boy? It's winter time. Huh? You act like your daddy. Straighten up. You live long enough, you're going to have some pain. And nobody likes pain. We don't like it. But the Lord helps us through the pain. And here's why. Because there's going to be somebody that doesn't know the Lord. And they're going to face some pain. And they're going to look at you and say, how did you overcome your pain? How did you overcome that situation? And all you can look at them and say is, all I can tell you is Jesus helped me. And he can help you too. Amen. See, the Lord doesn't do away with the pain because if he did, we couldn't help anybody else. Amen. But he helps us through the pain so we can show somebody else that he can help them through their pain. Nobody signs up for pain. Hmm? But the Lord helps us because he's a gracious Lord. He knows your pain, friend. You might be here today hurting. I mean really hurting. And everybody sitting around, you think you're okay because you shook their hand and you smiled at them. But inside you're hurting. If you want his sheep, just roll it over on him. He can help you through your pain. Can I say this? He cares. He's concerned, and he wants to help you. And I've learned this, Brother Bob, the best way for him to help me is me let him have it. See, as long as I want to carry it, he'll let me. But when I've had it and held it long enough and tired of carrying it, if I give it to him, he'll give me the strength to get through it. Can I say this? He knows our nature. He knows our pleasure. He knows those things that make us happy. Hmm? What a blessing. You know, some people, all they talk about is negative, 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 negative. I call them negative Nelly. Hmm? But I'm glad the Lord allows us to enjoy some things. He, he, he knows what makes us happy. I'm glad that he allows things to come into our life. I'm glad every now and then going down the highway, he'll let a whole truckload of Corvettes go by me. That makes me happy. 
Huh? Like, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? It's better than looking at a whole truckload of Yugos. Huh? Does anybody see one of them last 20 years? You know why? They was made to drive for about 5,000 miles and throw away. That's all they were good for. Huh? You know what I seen the other day? A gremlin. <laughs> ah, we got some old folks in here. Remember them? AMC gremlin. Nets mom and dad had one. Huh? And before I know them, but they had one. A gremlin. There's just some high class quality machinery right there, boys. Your first car ought to be a gremlin. Because that'll make you appreciate your second car, I promise you, huh? Listen, he knows his sheep, knows our name, knows our nature, and he knows our need. He knows what you stand in need of this morning. He knows all about you. He knows your physical needs. Hmm? It amazes me how many people think that I've got to tell somebody what I need so I can get it. You know, Matthew 6 tells us that the Lord knoweth that thou hast need of these things. He told us not to trust in those things. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and God will add all these things to you. God knows what you need. Well, here's what I've learned, Brother Ron. There's things we think we need that we really don't need. We can live without it. Hmm? He knows what you really need. Hmm? And a lot of times, a lot of things we're asking for, him, we really don't need. But he knows your need. Hmm? If your cupboard's bare, he knows that. If your checking account's bare, he knows that. Uh, if your gasoline tank's bare, he knows that. I tell you this story, true story, true story. I, I probably used it and put it in the oldie goodies box. You'll find it somewhere back there. But this true story. Back years and years ago, years ago, uh, I was working in a fiberglass factory, going to college, working in a fiberglass factory. And when I was working in the fiberglass factory, we made parts for cars and Peterbilt trucks and all kinds of things. We made these molds. We had these molds, and we would make parts. And what you did, Brother Clinch, is you would uh, uh, fill the mold with the fiberglass and everything. You'd shut the mold and pump in the resin, and it would form it at, at a certain temperature. When your mold lifted up, you had the part, you threw it off, and then somebody else worked on it and all that. Most of the time, I was a finisher. Most of the time, all the parts were done. They brought to me, and then I finished them. Now, I, you, you, I don't look like a car part finishing kind of guy, do I? But I've done that work. Hmm? Uh, but there was one day they was running short, and I'm running molds. And I was running two. I had one on each side of me. And we had these uh, uh, electronic uh, handheld devices that opened them and closed them and all that. And so uh, I'd run two parts, and I'm looking at this one over here. What I did not see over here is that I had my hand on uh, uh, this one raising this mold over here, and the mold failed. And the, the, the lift that held the mold up broke. And that mold come down and hit my left arm. And I was out of work for a little while because my arm didn't work. That mold weighed 3,000 pounds and it hit my arm, okay? Thankfully, it didn't hit my head. It would have broke the mold, okay? Uh, so I was out of work. But I was still going to church, going to church faithfully, serving God. There's some Brother Pittman was my pastor. Never forget, my parents were out of town one weekend. I went to church, got to church, and I realized when I pulled in the parking lot, maybe you've never done this, but my tank was on empty. I never forget, we was on visitation one time. My tank was getting towards the empty, and Brother Tony was in the car, and he was having a fit. Brother Doug, we need gas. Brother Doug, we need gas. Brother Doug. I said, Tony, I got 30 miles left. What are you talking about? We don't need gas. Drove him crazy. I was going to get gas till I knew it was driving him crazy, so I didn't get gas till I dropped him off. You know, when I just so him being crazy, I might have had something to do with that. But anyway, I didn't have any gas with church away. All I had in my pocket was my tithe check, my tithe money. I had cash money. That's all I had. So you know how the devil is. Well, brother Doug, you don't have any gas to get home. You don't have any money to eat on. Once you got, you got that tithe, once you just use that to get gas and eat on, you can give your tithe next week. Anybody ever have faced anything like that? I'm the only one the devil's ever talked to like that. Uh, well, the offering plate come around. I just took my tithe out and threw her in the offering plate because that's what I was supposed to do. You say, well, how is you going to eat? How is you going to get home? I don't know. All I know... Because it's right to pay your tithes. 
and I wanted to pay my tithe. Well, after service, we had a, a deacon, Brother Bill Ivey. Brother Bill Ivey's in heaven now. Brother Bill come up, his wife's name was Dina, and he come up and said, Brother Doug, he's an old country boy, he said, Miss Dina, and I just want to know if you wanted to go out and get something to eat with us, I'll buy you lunch if you want to go out and get something to eat. And I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, Brother Bill, that'd be real nice of you. Yeah, I'd, I'd be glad to. So we went out to eat, and he bought my lunch, and paid the tip and everything. Uh, by the way, when a waitress waits on you, you're supposed to give them a tip. Thought I'd throw that in some of you tightwads. But anyway, he went back, dropped me off to church, and I'm getting out of the car, and he got out of, out of the car, and he said, Brother Doug, you, you might need a little gas money. And he gave me some money in my pocket or in my hand. It was the exact same amount that I put in the tithe offering, huh? So I got to eat, got to put gas in, still had money left over. He said, how did that happen? God knew my need. Uh, hey, I learned a long time ago, you put God first. Uh, he'll never let you down, my dear friend. Huh? He knows your need. He knows your physical needs. Huh? He knows everything that you need, both physically, both financially, everything. He knows that. Can I say this? He knows my need. He knows the need of what place I'm in concerning Him. He knows where I'm at today. Amen. Am I right with Him? Am I close to Him? Am I right with Him but a little distant from Him? Do I know Him but I'm far from Him? He knows the place where I'm at with him today. He knows the place where you're at with him today. He knows his sheep. Hmm? He knows those no anxieties you got going on about doing business with him. You remember when Peter had denied the Lord and the cock crew and it all came back to Peter and then the Lord resurrected and Peter... He was just ashamed to face the Lord. And he went a fishing, and the Lord was on the seashore, hollered out, Children, have you any meat? Isn't it amazing? Peter wanted to get away with the Lord, but you can't get away with the Lord if he shows up where you're at. And I've learned this. About every time I didn't want the Lord to show up where I was at, he showed up. Uh Peter and them fished all night, didn't catch a thing. There's the Lord on the, on the seashore frying up some fish and having some bread. Hmm? It always amazed me. Where did the Lord get to fish and the bread? Huh? Well, he's the bread of life, and he, he's the one that's the master of the sea. I'm sure he, he told the fish to hop in the, in the, in the pan, and uh, 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 he commanded rocks to turn to bread. I don't know what he did, but he got it. He knew what they needed. Huh? There's Peter eating some fish. Can you imagine fish made by the Lord? Yeah. I mean, I like red lobster. I'm sure the Lord's fish was a whole lot better. And he's sitting there eating that fish, and every bite's great, and he's in it, but it's bitter to Peter. Everybody's like, oh, this is so good, but oh, it came from the Lord. I don't want to look at the Lord, but his fish is so good. And then the Lord said, Peter, I said, oh, don't talk to me, Lord. Talk to John. Don't talk to me. Preach to Donald. Don't preach to me today, Lord. Let me hide back over here. Just eat a little fish. Peter, do you love me? Oh, don't ask me that question, Lord. Yeah. Chew me out, Lord. Tell me how sorry I am, Lord. Tell me that I don't deserve to eat your fish, Lord. I'll amen you. But don't ask me if I love you. He said, yes, Lord, I, I love you. Probably thought to, and I love this fish. A few minutes go by and says, Peter, oh, not again. I already told you I loved you. Do you love me? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. Third time, Peter, Lord, you knowest all things. You know I love thee. Feed my lambs. See, what the Lord was trying to do is get Peter to forgive himself. There was not one second the Lord didn't love Peter. But he wanted Peter to come face to face with, did he really love the Lord? 
You may be here today and you may have had a bad week. And the last thing you wanted to hear is that Jesus loves you. You wanted to be chewed out this morning. But the Lord just wants you to know He loves you. But He wants to know, do you love Him? And so I love Him. Do you love Him enough to forgive yourself? And then go on and do what He wants you to do in your life. See, He knows my physical needs. He knows the place that I'm at with Him. But He also knows the provisions I need for what lies ahead. You see, sometimes we come to church and we don't need the message right now. But see, the Lord knows what's up around the next bend. And sometimes He's loaded our wagon today for what we're going to need ahead. See, He knows tomorrow. And He knows what you're going to need for tomorrow. See, He knows the provisions I need for what lies ahead. I've heard preaching on grace and dying grace and God will never leave you nor forsake you and all that only to have a loved one pass away. And I didn't store up that message, Brother Ron, that God tried to provide for me. And it hit me extra hard. See, sometimes God is giving you what you need for the future, but He's giving it to you today. That's why every time you come to the house of God, you need to pull up under the table and eat. Because you're going to need it. You're going to have to travel in the strength of that meat maybe 40 days like Elijah did. And can I say, he knows what you need tomorrow too. The Lord knows his sheep. And his sheep knows his voice. And they follow him. Let me ask you this question. Are you one of his sheep? If you're not one of his sheep, he desires for you to be. He paid your price on Calvary so you can become one of his sheep. And friend, if you're not one of his sheep, we'd love to introduce you to him so you can become one of his sheep. And in a moment, we're going to have an invitation. And we invite you to come and we'll get somebody to take the Bible and show you how you can become one of his sheep by being born again. A lot of people, Brother James, say, I hope I'm one of his sheep. I sure think I'm one of his sheep. Well, you can know that you're one of his sheep. And the Bible spells it out so clear. You must be born again. If you're here today and you're one of his sheep, are you living up to that? I don't want to be a goat. A goat butts. A sheep follows. But I want to be one of his sheep. Uh, I've seen commercial where sort of sleepers got their sheep. I want people to see commercials out of my life saying that's one of the Lord's sheep right there. I can tell by his life. I can tell by the way he looks. I can tell by what comes out of his mouth. I, I can just tell by his countenance. He belongs to the Lord. That's one of the Lord's sheep. Are you living up to that, friend? Or when people look at you and say, well, I just don't know about them. You ought to leave no doubt. I'm one of his sheep. I hear his voice. Do you hear his voice? Do you know his voice? I follow him. You know how folks know if you're one of his sheep? You're right behind him. Hmm? Are you one of his sheep? If you are, how good a sheep are you? The folks know you belong to the Lord. He knows his sheep. Do you know him? Do you know the will of God for your life? You ought to, if you're one of his sheep. Let's all stand this morning. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. I'm glad I know him. I don't deserve to get to know him, but I'm glad I know him. If you're here today and you don't know him, you can know him. And if you do know him, you ought to be right behind him. And everybody ought to know you're one of the Lord's sheep. Folks are coming. Folks are praying. Friend, if you don't know him, why don't you come? We'll get somebody to take a Bible and introduce you to him. So they're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless you. I'm glad I'm one of your sheep. Lord, I pray for anybody in the building today that doesn't know you. Today would be the day they become one of your sheep. I pray for those that are your sheep. They, they'd 
be right so close to you, everybody knows that they belong to you. Maybe there's a sheep that's a little far off. I'm reminded of that, that uh, was Luke 15, the 90 and 9, and the one that was away from the fold. Lord, I pray if somebody's got their eyes on a far country, they'd get back to the fold. God, just speak to hearts now, blessing this invitation. We'll thank you for it. For it. Save that one near as hell. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.